everyone and um, I'm hoping that you enjoyed chapter one of our book Romans on the Rampage. Um, I particularly enjoyed it and um, I really like the character of the Raven and I can't wait to find out what mystery he gets up to in chapter two. So we're going to move on swiftly to chapter two. It's quite a long chapter so you might want to make yourself a comfortable. Okay chapter two, Nasty Neighbours. We walk back to the villa very slowly because we're all in mourning for the Grins. Not to mention Scorcher, well, the family walked while I hopped, strutted, flapped and generally made my annoyance with jealous clear to everyone. Perilous's dad, Chrysius, kept shooing me out of the way with his foot, so I took a sideward swipe at his left, big left toe with my beak. I have to say that, as honks go, my beak is a whopper. So Chrysius leapt into the air clutching his foot and then had to hop the rest of the way home too. Oops, so sorry I said. I was sure that was a dead mouse I was kicking. It was my toad, you idiot, Chrysius roared. As I was saying, Chrysius, I am most apologetic. I could not be more remorseful if I'd actually eaten your toe. May Jupiter, God of Suns, rain blessing and plasters upon your pink appendage. I hope, dear reader, that you was impressed with my little speech as I was. I must say that considering I'm a raven, I do have a way with words. Thanks to my teacher, Thesaurus. Perilous was certainly amused. He was grinning at me and pretended to hop and clutch his foot too. The good thing his dad couldn't see him. But let's just move on. Or we'll hop on in Chris's cases. <laughs> I do crack myself up sometimes. By the time we reached the villa, Hysteria was in tears, poor girl. She has a habit of bursting into wild sobs from time to time. Poor Scorcher, I really feel for him. Um, matter, matter, that's your actual Latin again. It means mother, in case you didn't know. Aren't you learning a lot? Yes, you are. Here you go, have a biscuit. I know, darling, said Flavia, as she went upstairs. She's a marvel, that woman. I have never seen anyone glide about that way, Flavia does. She is tall, elegant and serene. And when she moves, you can't see her legs doing anything at all. It's as if she's, a little, she's on little wheels. She never flusters either. Chrysius doesn't know how lucky he is to have a wife like that. I'd marry her myself if, I, if, if she was a raven. Maybe I could stick wings on her and pretend. No, you're right. It wouldn't work, would it? I'm going upstairs to change, Flavia told everyone. The air at the races was so clogged with dust, I could barely breathe. I'll be down soon. And off she glid, glided, glided. Uh, I will have to check that one with my thesaurus. Meanwhile, Hysteria carried on bewailing Scorcher, being left out of the team. Perilous watched his sister somewhat scornfully. He came across to where I had perched myself beside the pool in the atrium, Latin. Atrium, small courtyard, even villas have one. Every, sorry, every villa has one. Why do girls make such fuss about everything, he asked. I cocked my head to one side and held his gaze. Why do boys like showing off, I asked in return. Perilous shrugged, so I told him. It's to get attention, hysteria wails. You go tightrope walking on your neighbour's washing line, people pay attention and you're both happy. Q-E-D, that's proper Latin, that is. Q-E-D, it means quad erat dimendrium, which is Latin for, that's Maximus, intelligentimus, raven crop bag, has just proved what he said is true, and it can't be argued with, okay? So it might not mean it exactly those words, but it sort of means it in spirit. See, like I said, us ravens are clever. Crop bag. I don't think so. Hey, Perilous, crop bag yourself. Crack! Perilous sighed. You like trying to be clever, don't you, crop bag? I don't have to try, Perilous. I am clever. Corvus Brainius Giganticus. Tuck, tuck, tuck. Well, I'm going across to see Scorcher, my boy announced. Chrysius, who was bu um, busily winding a long bit of bandage round his left big toe, straightened up and glared at his son. Don't spend all day over there with that lad. He might be a, be a fine would-be charioteer, but he's still an ex-slave. 
You could spend more time with boys of your own it was social class. Perilous reddened. Actually, patter, I'm going to be a charioteer too. Patter, can you guess what that means? You know what matter is, after all. Exactly, well done. Patter means father. Aren't we getting along well? Have another biscuit. Now, it was Chrysius who turned red. You are not going to be a charioteer. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. When you finish school, you will come and work in my office alongside me. You should have seen Perilous's eyes glowing. That's what they are doing, glowing like red hot coals. I would rather be a slave than work in your stuffy old office, he yelled as he stormed off across the road. My goodness, the the boy does live dangerously, speaking to his old pa patter like that. But then that's perilous for you. He's a real daredevil. Did I mention his tightrope walking? I think I did. But here's the story. On the other side of the road from our villa is another big house with a, which is full of tenants. There's Trendia, the seamstress, and a lodger, Scorcher, and the inventor, Madas Bananas. I'll tell you about all of them later. In particular, and never to be forgotten or taken lightly, are Crabus and his wife, Septicemia. They are the worst neighbours ever, and I wouldn't wish them on anybody. It's not, no, it's no wonder Perilous and I call them ghastlies. They are always complaining and make life, dif life difficult for everyone, especially the other people who share the house with them. So, the story. One day, Septicemia has been going, it ha, has been doing her washing, or rather her slave, Potopon, has been doing the washing, and she hangs it out to dry on the rope stretched from the ghastly's balcony across to, across to Trendia's black balcony. It's the washing line that everyone uses. Perilous is over there visiting Scorcher, who is teaching chariot racing tactics to the young lad. Scorcher is telling Perilous how important a good source of balance is when you're being rattled about in a lightweight chariot. Perilous being the withdrawn... I've lost where I am. Ah, but sorry. Perilous being the daredevil he is, tells Scorcher that he has the most brilliant sense of balance already and he will prove it right in front of Scorcher's eyes. Next thing, Perilous has climbed up on Trendia's balcony and is stepping out onto the washing line. Arms outstretched on either side, wobbling about all over the place. Can you believe it? Perilous actually manages to get about halfway along the washing line before the rope breaks. Down comes Perilous, engulfed in Septicemia's washing and thrashed about all over the dusty courtyard. Septicemia comes bursting out of the house like a giant cold sore and starts screaming at Perilous without a thought for whether or not the boy was hurt. You stupid, 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 stupid... Yep, yeah, all right, Septicemia, I think we've got that bit. Stupid boy, look at my filthy shoes. I shall have to wash them all over again. Oh, really? Is that so? Uh, hang on a minute, Septicemia. Uh, you didn't wash those sheets in the first place. Your poor slave girl, put upon, did all that washing. She's the one who will have to do it again. I must quickly tell you that Crabus and his wife think they're better than anyone else in the house. Over the road because they do have one slave. Whereas everyone else in the other street has none. I felt quite sorry for put upon. It's bad enough being a slave, but to be a slave to the ghastlies, I think I'd rather eat slugs for the rest of my life. Slugs being the least tasty of creatures. Give me a bit of dead squirrel and I'll be on, on um, I'll be your friend for the rest of your life. Well, a week at any rate. Anyhow, that's what happened with the washing line. Daredevil Perilous, that's my boy. I mean, he actually got halfway across without losing his balance. He probably would have made it the whole way if the line had been broken. And so we have it. Perilous wants to be a charioteer, just like Scorcher, who was yet 
um, who has yet to become one himself. Hysteria wants Scorcher to fall in love with her. Chrysius wants his son to follow the footsteps and have uh, and have an office job. And I, Corvus, Maximus, Intelligentimus, Imus, Imus, would like another biscuit. Thank you very much. Okay, that's the end of chapter two. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I know it jumps around a bit, doesn't it? Um, could, might be a little bit difficult to follow, but it does get easier because I have actually read it already. So I hope you enjoyed that. And then you can join me tomorrow for um, chapter three. Okay, take care.